It's a clear day at the airport and the traffic flow is going smoothly. The pilot of Big Jet 5575 is at the runway holding position, conducting his before takeoff checks. ATC issues him a conditional clearance to line up behind the next landing aircraft. But because of the oblique angle of the taxiway to the runway, he can't see the final approach to the runway, nor the threshold. The pilot acknowledges the clearance and read back correctly. Behind landing A320, line up and wait runway 27 behind Big Jet 5575. A short while later, an aircraft passes in front of Big Jet 5575 on the runway. Convinced it's the landing A320, the pilot completes the last item on his checklist, releases the brakes and starts moving towards the runway. Just as he's about to enter, a fast-moving aircraft crosses in front of him from the landing direction. He immediately applies the brakes, but it's only by chance the two aircraft don't collide. The pilot then realizes that the first aircraft was not the landing aircraft he was waiting for. Conditional clearances can contribute to runway incursion incidents if they're not used correctly. Yet, they can be useful to speed up the flow of traffic, so properly using them is key. That's why any conditional clearance must consist of 1. An identification 2. The condition 3. The clearance and 4. A brief reiteration of the condition, always in this order. For example, Big Jet 5575 behind A320 on short final lineup and wait runway 27 behind. Also abide by the following four key points to safely use conditional clearances. 1. The aircraft or vehicle causing the condition must be clearly visible to both the pilot and the controller. 2. The aircraft causing the condition in the clearance must be the first one to pass in front of the other aircraft concerned. 3. The readback of the conditional clearance must always contain the condition. 4. The controller must listen to the readback to confirm the flight crew correctly acknowledges the clearance. Learn more about conditional clearances on Skybury.